create your own AI influencer using Midjourney. It's all going to happen right here in this video. These days, everyone is really excited by the idea of creating an artificial intelligence influencer ever since we found that one Spanish influencer was making ten dollars or $11,000 a month with brand deals and sponsorships. The window is wide open because that AI influencer says the adventures of an AI influencer. You don't even have to hide what you're creating anymore. There are a lot of methods for creating AI influencers, and they're really hard. They're really arduous. The most important part of the process is to create something using a LoRa. In order to create a LoRa, you need 20 to 40 images of your character that you then feed in to train a model. Where do you get those 20 or 40 pictures of the same person? It's really hard to create those until now. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in mid-journey, how to create amazing pictures that will look perfect on Instagram, get you tons of followers, let you build an audience, whether you want a beautiful woman, a beautiful man, or anything in between. I've got you 100% covered. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it right after the music. To start this process, we want to find the perfect influencer that you want to create. In order to do this, we're going to use alpha.midjourney.com. Most of you should have access to this by now. It's a lot easier because I can see my work and it's definitely easier for me to show you my work when I use this website as opposed to using Discord. It's a little bit less programming. When we're designing our influencer, we want to first make sure we have all the right settings. So we're going to click the three lines. We want to make sure that we're in mode raw that we're in version six, the latest version, and that speed is whichever speed you want. Turbo is what I use when I'm doing demonstration videos. When I'm not recording for you guys live, I use fast. And if you run out of credits at the end of the month, you can drop into relax where it takes about 90 seconds to create each image. Also important, you want stylization to be at either three or 400. And then the image size, because we're designing an influencer, I have it set to tall because that's what I'm using for my demonstrations later, which is one to two. Those are things that look great when they're vertical, like a TikTok video or an Instagram picture. But let's start by creating our model. We want to be at stylized three to 400, which you can see right here. And the most important part is we end in, in the style of cinematic that tends to get a really cool person. Now, my first version is beautiful athletic woman in a little black dress, diamond necklace, green eyes, black hair, tan skin in the style of cinematic. And you can choose which of these women you like. They're not all exactly the same. If you look close enough, you could not put these on an Instagram profile. Most people would notice it's a different person. So we're just choosing a winner. When I tested this model, I didn't love the results I got in the second round. There was something that happened, I think because of the tan skin part of the prompt that wasn't coming through correctly. Tan skin is a really good prompt in Leonardo, but it's not working quite right here in mid journey. So there's something wrong with that phrasing. I'm going to pull it out and try and create another version. And this time I'm going to say beautiful woman in a little black dress, diamond necklace, green eyes in the style of cinematic. And I'm just looking for someone that I really respond to. This is the image that I like the most. And when you're training certain Laura models, they want it to be square. So if you're going to train your model inside of Leonardo, they want either 512 by 512 or 768 by 768, depending upon if you're using Stable Diffusion 1.5 or 2.1. All that matters is a lot of these lower models want square images, mostly of the face. If I'm training for art flow, which is what I like to use more. And if you guys want me to demonstrate creating an actor in art flow, let me know in the comments below. And I will do that and go to the next level with this character. But I want to make sure that this gets you guys excited because this is already pretty amazing. Once we have our character, we can start pulling her into the prompt by just dragging the image up here, making sure we click on the image. It looks like a little person that makes sure that it's the character reference. I had to white out one of the images because for some reason it generated a nude, which I've never had happen before. And the prompt was woman in a rowboat at sunset facing camera. I don't know why that triggered nudity, but it's a glitch in mid journey. So I certainly don't want to show that on camera. We are getting some really good accuracy here. Notice the second part of the prompt is CW zero. That's character weight zero. Character weight is on our scale of zero to 100 at 100, same face, same clothes, same body position at CW 50. Same face, same clothes. You can move the body around at CW0, same face, different outfits. It's worth testing with your characters if you want to try adjusting a little bit on the CW scale, but this is definitely the same woman. We can look at her face right here. That's her. This really feels like the same person. The face lock inside of Midjourney is just so good right now. We can put her on a horse and we get some very distinctive images. This really feels like a picture taken in the 1800s. 
This feels like a picture taken in the early 1900s because there's a little bit of that sepia tone. The horse is a light brown. There is some color on the horse, but the rest of the image is quite faded and damaged. And here's the horse from the back. Why is this happening? I didn't say what type of horse, what direction she's facing. I didn't set a style. All of these are an acceptable answer because I'm trying to create a breadth of images to really give something useful if I'm going to train another model. So I want a lot of quality. This is the image I think is the best. This feels like a 1970s woman riding a horse. This feels like an ad for a perfume or something, but it does feel like the picture you'd see in an ad. Her hair is really fancy. It looks very cool. And I'm very pleased with this image. We can try putting her in different situations, such as woman sitting in a restaurant. All four of these are the same woman. What I want you to really pay attention to is minor changes. One thing I've noticed is that the necklace is not really locked. As much as the face is locked and black dress is locked, the dress does change slightly between images and the necklace changes. This is okay because it's not a uniform. When they talk about one of the challenges of character reference, the outfit, especially if there's a design on the front of the uniform, like a superhero logo, that's something that you'll have to re-add each time to your image, which is doable using the area edit. So it is totally doable, but it's hard for it to lock that part in because it's really designed to be a face lock more than a body lock. It is the same woman in different situations. The necklace changes. She's still in a black dress, but it was not a fully tight lock. If we jump to woman in a jogging outfit, style raw, I've dropped the CW back down to zero because I don't want her jogging in a dress. And this feels very natural. Very realistic. This does feel like an ad to me. This feels like Abercrombie and Fitchy, which is fine. And she has different outfits. I don't know why she seems to always jog in the woods. And how often do you look perfect and take pictures in the woods unless you're in a magazine? I then put her into a car. We have her from different positions. What I like about this picture is just because of the side of her face. This allows me to train another model with pictures from different sides. So she has a 360 degree perspective. So pictures from the back and pictures from the side and full body pictures are useful. Here's her driving. It seems like sunset a lot. I also then try woman in a swimsuit. And we have some really great images. These would be great on Instagram, would do really well. Got lots of likes. I could see her becoming very popular. Put her into a bikini to see how much it changed. These are a little bit pushing the edge of risque, if you ask me, but that's what Instagram is all about. So I'm going to go fast these pretty quickly. But you can see, you get amazing pictures. She feels like a real person. The next part of the process is tweaking. So now we have her driving a car. This time I didn't put CW0, so she's driving car in the dress. Very glamorous. We are having some really good accuracy here. We haven't had any of the images where her head is mispositioned based on her body. This is a recent improvement since the last time I was testing character consistency. And it's nice to see that they've solved that problem that I covered in my previous character consistency video, which you can watch right here. Now we have her in a sundress, really artistic, like in front of an oil painting or watercolor painting. Now she's inside of the painting. All of these are great. This is a great picture of the back. I believe this is her. Here's a woman laughing in a nightclub. We want to try giving her different expressions to create a sense of humanity. Not every smile is going to be the winner. Each of these smiles is slightly different. There's not a strong consistency with the teeth. They're pretty close, but they're not perfect. If you're a dentist, you probably notice that there's some imperfections. This image does have a problem with too many necklaces. Not that they don't look real. It doesn't seem right for someone of this level of glamour to have three necklaces that don't work together. That's a giveaway for me. We also can put her on a Ferris wheel in a dress. We get some really interesting pictures by slightly modifying. I'm not sure that this is a Ferris wheel. This looks like a giant swing, but golly, this looks really cool. We're getting some really great images. All of these really have me pleased. CW0 means the outfit changes, and we're just saying it's a sleet stylized 300 by just testing different prompts. If we want to create our own new character, we can play around with this prompt. Beautiful woman in a little black dress, diamond necklace, hazel eyes, blonde hair in the style of cinematic. These are all beautiful women who are slightly different. So you just choose which of the faces you really respond to. They're slightly different ages. I feel like these range between 18 and 25. Just how I see things, you may see it differently. Here we can see another batch of four women. When we're creating it, we want to do in batches of four. We can also create a man and put him in a tuxedo. And I tried putting the man in a swimsuit by leaving CW at 100. He has to be in a tuxedo and a Speedo swimsuit. So we get this interesting mix, which is high fashion. <laughs> These are a little bit crazy because I made a mistake in the prompting. But let's create a character of our own and start from scratch.
I'll show you exactly this process. So I want to go through each part of the prompt. I'm going to do vertical image because that's what I like to work with right now. I mean, raw version is the most recent version, stylization three or 400. And I'm going to put some new words. We have beautiful Irish woman in a little black dress with a diamond necklace, green eyes, blonde hair, light freckles, and the style of cinematic. And we're going to add a modifier to our prompt, dash, dash, repeat. And then three, this will give us three batches of the prompts. So we have 12 images to choose from to create our new awesome AI influencer. These should be quick because we're in turbo mode. These images are good, but they're too similar to our last influencer. I'm not happy with that. I want to do something a little different. This one is quite close to what I'm looking for. I want to give her a different hair color. So I'm going to try red hair. The danger with this word is that it may overly read it. Maybe I want to use Auburn. I'm not sure what Auburn means, unfortunately. I'm not sure if Robert is a shade of red or a shade of brown. So I'm going to try adding in red hair. I want like a light hint of red, not a super strong red. Let's see what we get, but we're getting close. If not, this one is really good because this one is different enough that it's a distinct woman. All right, we have 12 redheaded models to choose from. It really comes down to personal taste or what look you want to have, what type of model look you want. I have found that if you put the word Instagram model in the prompt, you're going to hit a lot of walls with image generators. A lot of them consider Instagram to be a banned word because they consider it adult content. So you'll hit community guidelines walls a lot. That's why I'm not using the word Instagram when I'm designing my Instagram character. I want to choose someone I like. I think this one's great. Almost all of these are really good. They're all similar women, but they're not the same woman until we start locking in. So once we have our winner, we just grab her, drag it in. There are three buttons here. It goes character reference, style reference, and image reference. The one that matters for what we're doing here is character reference. If you want to lock in the style so it always looks like it's taken with the same camera in the same type of situation, you add in a second image and lock that in. I covered that in my previous video about style reference. Here, I'm getting enough consistency that it's designing a realistic woman because it's pulling in that character reference, so it's working fine. If I want to take this character and change her into a type of cartoon or different types of image, then I need that style reference image. But for here, I don't really need that. And now I can simply say woman flying a World War II plane. I know that you're supposed to push II. I just wonder how Mid Journey interprets that. So we have everything here. I want to change her outfit. I'm going to push dash dash CW space zero. So dash dash lets you know that it's a modifier. And CW, it just stands for character weight. And zero means just keep the face. Don't keep the outfit because I want her to fly the plane in a World War II era appropriate outfit as opposed to in this dress. If you forget which woman you chose, fortunately, it puts it over here on the side. I can pull her in again. Every single time you do it, you have to make sure you click that little person and you can say woman 1920s dress. There's an issue with the freckles getting overly accented when it moves to the next image. That's something that I'm noticing is a limitation. So I may need to not use freckles right now. That is something that happened in earlier testing. That's why I'm doing this live to show you a real example. So I may have to use a woman who doesn't have freckles or remove freckles from that prompt because it seems to be causing a glitch. Let's see if it happens again. Yeah, it's over accentuating the freckles in these images. So we're going to modify this just a little bit and see if we can create something that is closer to what we're looking for. We're just going to go back to creating our influencer. And this is part of the iteration process going to remove freckles just because it seems to have caused a glitch. And let's do repeat three again. So the same issue that happened when I chose tan skin on a model, something about that prompt came through in the second iteration, the photocopy of photocopy and started glitching. A beautiful Irish woman in a little black dress, diamond necklace, red hair, green eyes. That's part also the fact that I have two hair colors is probably causing a glitch as well. I didn't catch that earlier. I make a mistake. Now let's see what happens if we don't have two hair colors in the prompt. I think it's okay for her to have freckles as long as it wasn't in the prompt specifically. That's what we're going to test right here. This woman has freckles. I'm going to pull her into this prompt. And then I'm going to try my airplane prompt again. So I can just copy this woman flying in World War II plane. Prompt is exactly the same. I just need to add the CW prompt character weight zero. 
If you're wondering why the 1920s dresses went wrong, the last time I tested, it's because I forgot to push CW0, so it merged two styles. Her freckles did pull through, but not as over the top. So there's something about having the word in the first prompt that was causing that problem. We can also put her into a 1920s dress. Let's do that. When we forget to add the character weight, we always are going to hit a wall. Now we have a woman in a 1920s dress. We've used our consistent character. We have style raw. Character weight zero means that she's going to put on a 1920s flapper style dress. And now we're getting some really, really good images. And they're all of the same woman. There's something about her head position here that's not quite right. But the other three are really solid. So that's how you can create it. If you want to see the process with a man, of course, we can have an influencer man. Why not? Let's go back down to the handsome guy I made earlier and fix this prompt. Let's put him in a Speedo swimsuit the right way. And we're just going to add character weight zero. Pay attention to his body shape. One of the good things about this character consistency is that he has the same body. This man is muscular, but he's the same amount of muscular in all four images. That's what's really important. He's not super muscular, then lean, then runner's body, then swimmer's body. It is creating a consistency in the body style as well, which is really important. Speedo swimsuit seems to be okay. The most important thing to ask yourself is, are these four pictures of the same man? That's what it all comes down to. We're jumping through different styles. So these two feel like an older picture, almost like a painting. This is like a 1970s advertorial style. This is very modern. This guy looks great to me. Perfect avatar. This is how we can create our perfect AI influencer. So that's the process for using Midjourney to create an AI influencer using the consistent character prompt. That dash CWRF character reference allows us to create multiple images of the same person, different situations, different outfits, different types of images, black and white images, colored images, images that feel like paintings. All those things are possible with the power of the updated character reference prompt. Midjourney keeps updating in the background. They update every single week and announce it during their Wednesday office hours. I heard about this week's update. I wanted to show you how easy it is to now create an influencer. If you want to use another model where you create a custom character on another platform, they want you to provide 20 to 40 images to train that character. To train the image of myself, I use an art flow, took 20 images. Those are all real photographs of me. I can use images of one of these characters, create 20 and train it on there. Leonardo wants 40. I did test this on Leonardo and didn't succeed, but I got some great success right here in Midjourney. I don't really need to switch to another platform because I'm able to create great images that are family friendly, that are perfect for a great influencer, that great representation of brands and can do some really cool things all inside of Midjourney. So I hope you're excited by this possibility and see that now you have the ability to create your own AI influencer without making things too hard. If you're interested in seeing more of this, making the influencers seem more realistic, modifying how they look, highlighting the images, taking them to the next level, or creating a Laura model, which is where I create a custom character on another platform, let me know in the comments below because that helps drive the direction of this channel. If you found this interesting, entertaining, or useful, please hit the like button. It makes a major difference on a channel of my size. That means more people will see this video. I am on a mission to hit 2,000 subscribers this month after hitting 1,000 last month. So your participation really helps with that. If you'd like to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button and more of my videos will appear in your feed and on your home screen. And if you hit the bell, well, you'll get notified every single time I post a video. Thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end. I absolutely appreciate it from the depths of my heart and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're gonna like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're gonna love them.